that there. All right. Hey, sis. Let's add it. Let's add it there. Cancel that. We will get started promptly in three minutes. I'm watching this coming to America movie. It's pretty, pretty funny. Silence this phone. We got some grown people in the room. We're going to go ahead and get started. Just wanted to say hi. Hello, to everybody out there watching and that will be participating in my first live session. I'm Dr. O, Dr. Ogburn, and I greatly appreciate everyone who is who's currently online. Today's topic may be, may be somewhat controversial. Let's get into it anyway. Today's topic, what's wrong with the, the, the Black woman? Why do they get such a bad reputation? So I just wanted to hear, I want to hear what you all think. Why do Black women get such a bad reputation. What's what's wrong with them? Y'all thoughts? No, y'all don't have an opinion? I know there are some people out there that have an opinion. One user said they let their emotions cloud their judgment way too much, too loud, too dumb. Well, let's, let's pin that one. Too dumb, too loud, and too dumb. They let their opinions cloud their 
their judgment. I'm sorry, let their emotions cloud their judgment. What do y'all what do y'all think about that? What's up, Alan? Where's some of the women at? What do, what do y'all what do y'all think? To one user saying they let their emotions cloud their judgment way too much. Definitely too loud. One user, black women have been so unprotected and judged on every side. Yes, dumb, uh, Dyson. Somebody wrote they're dumb. I'm not sure what that's about. Sean Dyson, Willie Lynch, what do you mean? Another user. Participant, most women let their emotions cloud their judgment. Is that true? Women, black women who are listening, is that true? That y'all let y'all emotions cloud your judgment? Hmm. I've been, I've worked in a number of places over the years and with black and non-black women. And I've seen some of that where they have let their emotions cloud their judgment. But is that why are they defined like that? So what I've seen and so what are you you've seen some, but why is that a stereotype that they let black women let their emotions cloud their judgment? One, one person put, not just black women. That's people in general, okay, I can buy that. But, but in particular about black women, why, why is it a stereotype It seemed to be more toward them in my experiences than, than other races? Somebody wrote, it's not, no, at, not at all funny. All right. When a man gets mad, he is being a man. Okay, so I guess men are aggressive. But when a woman gets upset, she is being emotional. It's a double standard. Is that, is that true? When a man gets mad, a black man gets mad at, say, that's just called being a man. But if a woman exhibits those same, that same trait, it's she's being emotional. Is that true? Why Enigma TV, double standards are necessary. Why, why is that? And back to the double standard, is that true? Why Dyson Paris, why do you think that's a double standard? And is it okay that there are double standards in, in some cases such as this? Sure. Because there are two genders. That's a topic for a different, different discussion. Two genders. Why would the standard be the same? All right. So if there are two genders, you got to have a standard for one gender and a standard for another gender. Gender, but. But we're talking about equality and we're talking about emotional outpouring or emotional responses. Do we need a double standard in that case? A man is a emotion. Yes, being mad, exhibiting. Well, you can be mad if you project it. It becomes an emotion that, that's projected. Sean Dyson put equality. I'm not sure what you're asking, sir. almost like we 
or some people jump to a conclusion that if a black woman is angry or any time a black woman tells or yeah, tells how she feels about something that she's angry or she's mad that she has to keep quiet. What do y'all think about that? So then wouldn't a man be emotional when he gets mad? All right, so good question. If a man gets mad, he's just being a man. If a woman gets mad, she's being emotional. If we're talking about equality, if a man gets mad, is he being emotional? I have my own opinion on, on that, but I'm a, I'll keep that quiet for now. One user wrote, because if a man gets emotional and acts like a bee, he won't be respected. All right, I see that. Men are emotional. And how are we emotional? How is our emotion, Enigma, how is our emotion different than a black woman's emotion? Rashida, men and women are not equal. However, men and women should both be able to control their emotions and anger. I agree. They should be able to control their emotions and anger. But the point is, if they don't, for a man, it's just called being a man. For a woman, it's called being emotional. It's they're being emotional if they can't control their emotions and anger. But why? <laughs> Enigma, Enigma TV, you're gonna, somebody gonna try to fight you in here. You, yes, she should shut up if in the presence of a man. I'll let y'all ladies handle, handle him. Men become more violent, it seems. I see some validity to that, to that statement, men become more violent. For me personally, I'm slow to anger. I'll go from zero to 58. It takes me a while to get there or to 59. It takes me a while to get there because I'm calm and I relax and I kind of keep quiet, listen. But from 59 to 60, it's like lightning. And then I kind of black out. I take out to my mom in that sense. I think we we black out, and and it's just not a good not a good situation. But Sean Dyson wrote, "There should be no double standards." Why is that, sir? Why is that? Enigma TV to a previous comment. He wrote, "Because we are predominantly masculine. Masculine energy penetrates, goes out. Feminine energy is magnetic." Netic. I hadn't heard that before. I hadn't heard that before. I'd like for you to ex expand on that. Men are, are out on a pedestal. I think you meant men are, because men are put on a, a pedestal in this world. Well, who placed us there? Who put men on a pedestal? Some statements don't warrant a response. We do have to learn how to know when to, to speak and, and know when to, to fight and, and to comment on something. I do a lot of listening. And if you take that word, listen, not just active, but passive, but if you take that word, listen and rearrange the letters, you get that word silent. So I, I stay quiet a lot, I do a lot of listening. As a leader or as, as a leader, oh, as a leader, we must hold everyone to the same standard. Leader in what way, sir? What are you, what are you talking about? Are you saying men are, are leaders? What, what leader? That's not true. Men have both masculine and feminine energy, and it's vital that they know how to use both to be balanced. I think that's a topic for another day, but point well spoken. Yeah, who, who's the leader? And, and while y'all are talking, I, yeah, let me, let me, let me say this. Let me just give a little background or let, let me ask this question. Are we focusing too much on the constant and, and not on the variables? The constant being the black woman, they have been told that they're angry or I've heard. Some have told me that they've been told that they're angry, aggressive, ill-mannered. Though that's the, the, the constant. 
the black woman that's angry or aggressive or ill ill mannered. I don't hear a lot of talk about the the variables, the variables, and let me. I want to break some of those down, and this is just my opinion and, and from from my experiences. So you you, ha you have social factors, right? You you have social factors such as that are variables, such as being in a a predominantly white or at least a, a non-black work environment, and those other non-blacks they're they're listening to, or even even if un unconsciously driven, they're listening to and accepting the enduring stereotypes, stereotypes such as black women are lucid, lose, lou. the stereotype that black women don't have any self-control, that they're, that they're angry, but do they ask why? Do they ask why? And I'm wondering, the why could be the other set of variables, right? Why are, why is that the stereotype? And in, in order for us to get to that, let me just break down a little bit of the history, just in case you're, you weren't thinking about it or you never heard this before. Just history of the Blacks in America. I mean, we all have heard this in, to some degree, hopefully. But I'll say it again. So you had slavery, which started around 1619, where Africans, they were imported, I call them imports, into this country. And that lasted around 1865, the abolishment of slavery. Then that's one period. Then you had the Jim Crow period that lasted about 100 years, give or take, from 1865 to, to 1965 by, by some estimates in some parts of the country. And what was big during that time were black women were raped and, and lynched and reproductive mutilation. In addition to issues such as unequal civil rights and negative media portrayals. And then from there, you had the civil rights era. Went about 20 years, 1955 to 1975. And some people may say that we're still, still fighting that, but it, it was a battle for, for civil rights. And then of course, still more or lots of, of, of violence against black women. Yet yeah, negative hypersexual portrayals in the media and and there's even been studies studies about about that, especially by psychiatrists and, and sexual medicine researchers. Anyway, hypersexual portrayals of black women, which was black women use sex to cope with emotional problems or issue. And then of course you had still continued generational uh, poverty. And then now you have the post civil rights era that we're, we're in but we still, to this day, we see black women being exploited in music and television and ads, movies. So as these things get passed down through generations, so too as the stereotype against black women and how they had to live or what was passed down. Is it possible to then, is it, is it possible that some of the stereotypes or some of the mannerisms if they're true, that they, they behave this way because of what was passed on down generation and generation, they've been angry because they've had to fight so, so, so much. Those variables, it, does, does any of that matter? Too, too many variables, leaders of our household, okay, I hear you. There are too many variables, but many times we find us in one stereotypical place. What is that stereotypical place? One person, Rashida, put, I feel like white America likes to use that narrative for us because it sells. That's true. Whatever can expand their agenda. And I see some conversations back and forth between some people. We hold our women to different standards. Why is that, Sean? She's a strong black woman. She's angry. She's a single mom, et cetera. It sells. But is that a good sell or a bad sell? Women have been marginalized throughout history. Yes. All right. <laughs> Enigma wrote, females wanted to be feminists. So he's blaming them. To some degree, he's blaming them for how things are, that if they didn't, if I understand him correctly, if they didn't want this, it, it probably it 
to some to some degree, it wouldn't be how it is. I think it's beyond a, a marketing thing. Okay. It's, a, it's sales because it happens. It's a it's a terrible sale. Okay, it's a hard place to be in. Back. All right, I hear you. Okay, because they are too. Yeah, I think it's beyond a marketing thing. I believe the most case here. Yeah, right. We sell it because we allow it to happen. In order to allow something, right, that means you're in control of something. You're in control. Like if I wanted to allow my daughter to do something, that means I'm in control. I can't allow something that I'm not in control of. So, Sean, if we allow it to happen and we don't want it to happen, what can we do about it? Blue Storm, hey. <laughs> Now, I've ran into black women and and it seems some of them anyway, they don't even know that they're being they're coming off as angry. I'm not going to say that they are angry, but the perception of of anger and they say that I, I wasn't aware I'm, I'm calm, but other people think I'm angry. Where's the disconnect? There's a lot of, a lot of back and forth. Some statements don't, all right? Hold them accountable. What are you talking about, Enigma? Just anger by whose standards? The person being communicated to, whoever whoever you're, you're, you're talking to, if it's that non-black person. Just a perception of anger. And that can be that maybe they're forceful. Or maybe they are you know, forceful or passionate. I've actually sat with someone and I've asked a non-white woman before why, because I, I witnessed something. Long story short, I asked, why did she think the black woman was being angry? Well, she's just so passionate and she didn't have to come across this way. And I asked, well, what's wrong with passion? You and I are being passionate right now. You're, you're passionately telling me what was wrong with the black woman. She used the same passion. Round and round we went and nothing really came of it. But why, why do y'all think that is? Non-black people have microaggressions. And do we have, do black people have, what type of aggression do we have? I get called angry all the time when I'm actually calm. I don't know, uh, Ms. Dyson, you may want to reevaluate that statement because I've known you your entire life. So let's, you may want to rethink that statement. I get called angry all the time, or maybe not all the time, but you are your mother's child. They assume because I am strong will that I'm angry. What's wrong with being strong-willed? I'm strong-willed, but I'm a male. But what's wrong with being strong-willed? Why does that have to translate, or why does that trans translate into anger? Expand on that for me. Enigma TV wrote, anger by your standards. I think he was responding to Rashida, anger by whose standards? And he wrote, anger by your own standards. Dice and black women have the right to be angry. I'm angry. Yeah, man, but you, you're always something. You're always angry. We need more from our black community, especially the black men. What, what can we do? And Sean, I think you're responding to when I ask, we allow it. And I think you're responding to that. We, we need more from our black community. What, what do you propose? Yeah, 
what is perceived as, as anger. Does anybody have any stories out there, a recent story of when, Dr. O, do you think she is an angry mother? Uh, I don't know if she's listening, so I don't want to say, but if you get with me afterwards, then we can, we can talk about that. I don't want to, I don't want to want to say, just never know. Support us, protect us, understand us in response to Dyson. We need more from our black community, especially the black men. And somebody wrote, support us, protect us, understand us. We need accountability. But how do we get that? And this may be a topic for another day. If we need a accountability, I mean, we're aware. We're aware that we need something, but yet we won't do it. Why won't we? Oh, you didn't mean to say she an angry mother. Okay, yeah, you're trying to, you can't do that. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. It's not lies. No, no lies at all. Stop accepting the bare minimum. Start owning and providing more. Be the dominant alpha male. All right, Sean, and just to all the, the men out there. I'm hearing a lot of, or reading a lot of what we can do, what we should do. What the hell, are, what are you doing? The code G wrote accountability for what exactly? Good question. Be the dominant alpha male. Uh, I wish this, this was a different discussion, but Sean wrote be a do dominant alpha male. I've come across women, black women who like that. It's a fine line, but then I've come across some who don't like it because they say, it's, you're trying to control me and you can't control me, et cetera, et cetera. That's a, that's a fine line, a good point, Sean. Rashida, I think because it's already out there that black women are angry, the stereotype has been passed on from generation to generation on the non-black side. It's easy to say that as default from other people instead of trying to understand how we are actually feeling. Okay. And then, of course, you get back in that loop. If you say how you're feeling, you're coming across as mad or angry. When we hear someone saying she's being an angry black woman, woman correct them. That is a way to stand up and help protect if, if you do hear someone saying she's being an angry black woman. I do get angry. My anger comes from me always having to prove myself because I'm a minority and didn't grow up with a silver spoon. They assume I am uneducated. We barely had uh, spoons. Uh, Ashford, growing up in my household, and I think some people can <laughs> attest to that, silver or, or otherwise. Sometimes it's the other way around. A man can be angry and be emotional, and sometimes a woman can be angry and just be a woman. <laughs> Topic for a different, <laughs> a different discussion, but I hear your point. But will these alpha black men do that? Do what? Will these alpha black men do that? It's me personally. I control my, all right, Enigma wrote, I control my whole situation. If you aren't being nurturing, supportive, and following my lead, you get the boot. <laughs> okay, that opens yourself up to a different set of issues, but I'm, I'm tracking. How do I silence, silence this thing? Okay. Okay, so me personally, also it's, um, well, I'm calling you Blue, Blue Storm, accept that. <laughs> right, bless his heart, right, right, right. Oh, it's already been almost 30 minutes of this discussing that. So what can we do? Well, let me go back to the to the main question. Why or oh, what's wrong with the black woman? What's wrong with the, the black woman? Since what does nurturing, support, and following your lead look like to you? That's a good question, Nicole. What does nurturing, support, and following your lead look like to you? Talking to Enigma when he said he would give them the boot if they're not following. I don't allow people outside of me to define me. 
describe me to myself or control anything in my heart. Okay. I didn't hear a response from black males and what they could do. It's there. So some were saying we need to stop accepting the bare minimum, start owning and providing more, be the dominant alpha male. That was one response. I didn't see anybody else respond to that. But with the men, what what can we do to protect our black women? When we hear someone saying she's being an angry black woman. Now, what if they are being angry? So you got that stereotype, right? Where we don't want to be, we black women, they don't want to be called angry. But what if they are being angry? What can we do then? I say then I'm speaking like I'm a non-black male. I'm representing a different race. What, what are we supposed to do then if you actually are angry? Because we all, we all get angry. We've all probably been in situations at work or around non-blacks where, where we were angry. Stop calling them. And right, I'm not going to share. So one user wrote, stop calling them and viewing them as, as the B word. I don't like to do much cursing, sir. So I'm not going to put that in there. That's a good, good point. Here's the girl. I'm not responding because someone may say I'm emotional and angry. <laughs> you and you may be. Well, that's yeah. I'm not responding because someone may say I'm, ma'am. You are angry, so so you might as well go ahead and and respond. I remember when you jumped out of a moving car on somebody when you could barely stand up. All right, I noticed I asked a direct question and you were basically unable to tell me what it looks like to you. So how am I supposed to give that to you and you can't even tell me what you need? I think she's talking to Enigma. We can stop lying to them, letting them enable us. They can stop enabling us and vice versa. We can stop lying to them. We could stop, but Enigma, why, why, why would you? We could definitely show them our true emotions and leave that tough stuff outside. All my women feel protected. <laughs> I don't know if you meant to put all your women, but you know, sure. <laughs> yeah, I like to be word. I try not to use words that I would not call my daughter. So that's how I, I some that I'm working on. Yeah, stop lying. Yeah, he's like, rather see them as goddess and mothers of civilization. Okay. Okay. Now I want to interject that into rather see them as goddess and mothers of civilization. I want to tie that to an enigma's statement of it gives them the boot if they're not nurturing and following his lead. So if they're not goddesses and seen as mothers of civilization, can they get the boot? Enigma, whoever you are. Go sit down somewhere. All right. right. I'm gonna pin that. Then it goes sit down somewhere. I had a conversation. It was probably four years ago. No, longer than that. Probably six, what is it, 2021? Probably six years ago. And it was a part of a different class that I was teaching. This was more on financial awareness, investments. It was a group of black people and men and women, older, probably in their, I think it was two young people, probably in their early 30s, and the rest were 45, 50, 55 or so. But the conversation, once I was concluding the financial piece, we just talked about culture and we talked about how to change our situation and everything. And for whatever reason, it got on, it got to black people and how we're looked at as, as being inferior. Why is it that even black men will look at black women as inferior? 
question for Rob. Uh, if you think that, then what's the shade towards the feminist movement? <laughs> Good question. Yeah. When you put people on a pedestal, what is that? you hold them in a position that they now have to live up to. What if I just want to be seen as a woman? Okay, so Nicole, good question. What, should we not put you on a pedestal then? It sounds like you want it both, both ways. Should we, sure, we can just look at you as a woman, but what if we want our woman, we want to place them on a pedestal? It sounds like that's going to be too much for you. What, what are we to do then? That would be throwing out mixed signals. Say so we lie about our, our we lie about our natures. We lie because society make us feel like we have to. We need to stand up and be men. They'll follow us. I don't care what they say. All right. We need to stand up and be men. So if we're not already there. Enigma. What? If we're not standing up to be men. What are we currently then? We're not men. So what are we? Here's the seat. <laughs> I'm asking what you. So why do you think that? I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> That's probably true. Boys? What do you mean by boys, Hershey Kiss? Come on. Boys. T children? I'm not sure what teacher. Oh. Children, okay, I see, I see. I'm not sure what you mean by children. If you put me there, I don't live up to your standard. I am somehow the wrong one. So you don't want us to put you, Nicole. We shouldn't put a woman on a pedestal. If you're not a man yet, then you're a boy. Okay, I get it. Okay, if you put me there. Nicole, you get the big boot. All right. I personally think that we need to instill bravery and confidence in our young black girls. And that, I think it starts there. That's a good place to, to start, right? The mothers, grandmothers, great grandmothers, what have you, to, to provide confidence for our, our young, young black girls. It's, and it's unfortunately that our confidence or I'm assuming black woman's confidence is misinterpreted. It's seen as confidence is seen as something else, as, such as anger or aggression. And I, I think for young black girls, they, they see that and it affects them. So as a, like I, I call my daughter beautiful all the time, all the time. Pretty is my nickname for her. I call her beautiful all the time. She she knows that that I love her and she knows that I wish I had her sooner so I could have been loving her longer. She knows that all the work that I've done, my background, my six degrees, that I did it for, for kids, any kids that I would have, and that whatever I'm doing, they can far, she can far surpass it. So I'm trying different ways to instill confidence in her so that she's not needing to be placed on a pedestal by anyone. She's not needing validation, but at the same time, she's not listening to anything that I haven't taught her. And so it's almost like a different language. The people who are speaking negative, negatively to her or about her or saying she's angry and everything, she can't hear because that's in German for example, or Russian. She doesn't understand it. She understands, she knows Japanese can write it and everything, but she doesn't know Russian. So that's how I'm training her that it's going to, she may physically hear it, but it's not gonna take hold and impart in her and, and affect her in a negative way because she won't understand what they're saying because her daddy has, for as long as she can remember, has imposed or in, instilled a level of confidence in her that no one can take away.
we are we are waiting on you to build a world that reflects your ride out masculinity. Thank you, Enigma, for the boot. May I have yet, yeah, please? Hi. We need to support and build it in our black women. All right. But how many for two feet? But how many men on this do that? I'm not sure what you're asking. I think we have to first start with setting expectations. What type of expectations? It does start at home. I, I, I really, really agree, believe that, it, that it, it starts at home because it's like old fools used, used to be young fools, right? Old women or older women, women used to be girls. And I'm just wondering if if they were taught a certain thing when they were little, growing up, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, if by the time they get of age or get out there in society where they're no longer under the thumb of their parents, if it would like it is the current the, the young generation, tw- 10, 11, 12 and less and younger, are they going to respond the same way we're responding today? Or would they respond the same way if they were imparted and, and taught confidence and stuff at such a young age? Would they even would they even be hearing it? We hear it because generational passing down stereotypes. But if we're not teaching them and we're teaching them to block that out, not hear it, so it's in Russian, are they going to respond the same way that we're responding? That con- this confidence, though, it's good until a person receives it, it negatively. Receive what negatively? Because confidence, how is that negative? I'm confused, Nicole. A lot of women don't have dads to give them that confidence. That's why they look for it in boys and men. Boys slash men, not, not boys and men, but... I'm actually, actually, one of my upcoming non-interactive videos is going to be on that, teaching boys how to be men, because you're right. The, there's a lack, in my opinion, a lack of men. There are boys in men bodies, but there's a lack of men teaching boys how to be boys. But we're supposed to be talking about women. How do we get on that? In my professional life, I've gotten that angry black woman thing out of nowhere. You probably were looking angry, man. We want black men to build a world for us where black men and women, I don't know what that means, where men and women are safe. I think there aren't enough good and product, productive black men and they are overworking the one who are. So it's not enough to just give you, okay. I too have trained my daughters about not letting how other people perceive them. Okay, good. One person wrote, I had a dad and he was toxic. So it just goes to the point that just having a dad doesn't mean anything. Doesn't necessarily mean mean anything. And then you build them up as confidence is or not G O R. You do follow us. What you just talked about. Okay. And they had it came from some <laughs> it came from, from somewhere. And they had to learn early about people doing that. We moved from a predominantly black community to a place where we are now in the minority. Okay. Okay, now, if we move to a place where we're not the minority, what about in where we are the majority in black neighborhoods, black cities, where we are the majority? It's not just non-whites saying it. It's black men saying that black women are angry as well. Why? Why do they see it just like we, we kind of expect it from non-whites, right? Or at least that's the stereotype. But that stereotype has penetrated the hearts, the mind, the understanding of black women from black men. Why do black men, why do we see some of the same things as non-black men? That's not fair. Just because she looks angry to be categorized as angry as an angry. Nope. My comment earlier when I said you you probably looked angry, that in no way 
signals that they should perceive you as angry. But however, it is that perception that's driving what they feel, what they, what they, and how they form their, their opinion, their, their judgment. So while it may not be fair, we can't say how another person interprets anything. Like I'm laughing on the inside but at some of these comments, but until I laugh, you don't, until you see me laugh or smile, you don't know. So it, we can't say how another person interprets a wrong statement, a word, body language. We, we can't do that. Is it okay if we want women to build a safe world for us then? I mean, double standards. <laughs> Good point, Enigma. Earlier, somebody, a couple of people wrote about they want men to build a safe world for them. Enigma asks, okay, so can women build a safe world for us men? I mean, we're talking about double standards, and there should be none. I think some people said there shouldn't be any, but that sounds like one. We have to have discipline to not feed into the worst parts of ourselves that the world wants us to be. It's very possible. I, I did a video on that. One of my interactive, my non-interactives, more they're more like lectures. I, I talked about this exact same thing as far as believing in yourself and rejecting the enemy, rejecting the thoughts of people who have no control over what we do, what we say, what we think, but we allow what other people say to paint our picture, right? So when we look in that mirror, we, we, we don't see our full selves. We see part of ourselves or we just see them. We don't even recognize who it is, or you may think it's you, but it's them because we are buying into and believing people saying, using your words, the worst parts of ourselves. And that's all we see. Check out, check out some of my, my videos. When people can't have their way with you, they are angry. People seem to believe black people deserve less. Okay. So when black people, men and women, Demand respect even from each other. People call them angry. Right, what about other char characteristics? Angry, uh, mad, ill mannered. I've even heard of like a hypersexuality, which is when women are, or women, when they were said they were, they were having sex as a way to control their emotions. They were having sex to deal with their problems and all that. So that was a stereotype that was passed down. Ain't no woman taking charge of no man. Why not? Because they, somewhere, because they want us to follow. These chats are coming in too fast. Black women can't say how they, they feel emotionally. Emotionally, they can't be passionate, angry if they take charge trying to be, try to be a man. What do you mean take charge trying to be a man? Are you talking about like a sex change or something? You know, wh whatever you want to do, but uh, it's XX and XY. You can't change, can't change that. But uh, maybe you're trying to say take charge like being a man. But yeah, so it's that passionate and, and anger or passionate. They see that as a synonym for, for angry right? because they want us to follow them blindly because they are the man what we are here to support. Okay, so Nicole, if they want us to follow them blindly, but we're here to support, expand on that some. If, if I wanted you to follow me, you would just be following me, period. You say blindly. Are you saying that no matter what I say, you, you're gonna, you have to follow me without asking questions? What do you mean? Ain't no woman taking charge over no man. I know some, sir, Enigma. I do know women who take charge over their men. Some people assume because I don't want to want to talk or I'm not smiling, I'm angry. Not true. Again, I, I've known you way too long. I don't walk around smiling every moment of life. Amen. That is true. You don't. However, I'm not angry. Uh, Reevaluate that. Enigma, would you let a woman do that, at least one of your many? Nope, he wouldn't. All right. Demanding and expecting, demanding and expecting respect is not anger. No, but how you say it 
can be taken as anger. Even though you're passionate, and it's a fine line, it's an unfair line in my opinion, but if you're passionate, if you're exhibiting anything that may seem masculine, that can come off as anger. My dad was in my life, married to my mother, never caused any heartache or dysfunction. A leader and hard worker, he told me to control my temper and be courteous, be self-aware because I would be judged. Yes, that, that is correct. You will be. Unfairly, maybe. But you 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 will, will be. And there's nothing wrong with judgment. I think society as a whole takes that word. Don't judge me. Who are you to judge? I don't know how many people are religious out there, but it talks about that in the Bible. And we can judge just the way we is 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 how we go about judgment. But we make judgments every day in our life, right? If I see if I see that the plug, the iron is plugged in and steam coming from it, I'm judging based on what I see, steam coming out, that that's hot. So there's nothing wrong with judgment. And I, I think society as a whole has passed this don't judge me down incorrectly because we do want to judge. The problem is judging based on your standard like you can and, and making them try to fit your standard so you can judge i judge people all the time but it's it's to help me make a decision sometimes quickly make a decision left left or right so I, I judge i don't put down you can't that's the difference between putting down and belittling but judgment yes somebody's angry chantelle you don't know me you are angry who says she's trying to take charge? You are not always right. A queen is there for her king. She She's supposed to be silent. Did he tell her to stop talking for a little bit? And I don't know. They are looking, they looked at us trying to be a man. I know some who want to wear their pants. Those are not alpha. <laughs> those are not alpha males. Then I'll, I'll leave that alone. Women see men not knowing what they are doing and expect us to follow them. Good point, T. In that, some of the people I've mentored over the years, and more mentoring than, than counseling, but a man, in my opinion, has to be worthy of being followed. You can't just. I believe in roles. I believe in roles. I believe in roles for the better part of my life. And there is a role for everything. But we can't expect women to follow us just because we are males. We, 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 can't, we can't do that. Just because we have... XY chromosome doesn't give us the right to, to be a be the leader or be doesn't make it that so that we we have to be followed because we're the man. The best part of a great leader is knowing when they need help. Okay, I want to tie that back to the black woman. The best the best part of a great leader is, is knowing when they need help. I know black women who won't ask for help at all. Does that mean they can't, they're not a leader? They're not a great leader or they couldn't be. I take advice from my woman. She is my wisdom. All right, and Nick, when you kind of Threw, threw me off there for a second. First time you said women, e yeah. Now your focus is on women, a yeah. I don't want to get you in trouble. I just wanted to throw that out. I have been in a meeting where a man yelled and a woman responded in a calm, intelligent way. And because she was black, they say, <laughs> say stop being angry. <sighs> that type of stuff doesn't happen to me. I don't know why. I, I, I wanted to, but I, I haven't seen it because I'd, I'd like to say something. Dyson, Paris Dyson said, I can't deal with a man I can't control. 
Why can't you? I judge everybody and everything. Yeah, I get it. Okay, I'm trying to. Oh, it's almost been an hour. We're going to stop this. Soon. <laughs> they mean don't persecute them. Okay. Men out here demanding reverence and respect when they have done nothing to prove it. What what do they got to prove to get reverence and respect? You mean earn? Nothing to earn it? To prove they are deserving. Respect is earned. Okay. All men aren't fit to lead. That's, that is true. A lot of black women. Oh, okay. A nigga wrote, a lot of black women need to be silent. Why, sir? We need to see black men move the meter in the world and compete with other men and stop arguing with us about nothing and then calling us angry. Go be productive. Well, if, if you're arguing back and forth, it, couldn't that be seen as, as anger, right? Unless you're having a nice, healthy argument, nice, healthy debate. My only thing with the black, with a black woman, oh, with black women is the one who gets a good man, but want to trade them in for what they perceive as gangster do. Okay, that may be a different topic, but I, I hear what you're saying. So they got a good, good guy, but want to trade them in for what they perceive as a gangster person. I'm used to seeing that or hearing of that out of young females where they want that, uh, the drug dealer, the gangster, the thug, they want someone who is known, popular. But as they age, they come to realize that someone articulate, well-educated, well-off is the right move. So Sean, if that's still happening, uh, change your circle, sir. Okay, all right. Enigma TV clarified, he said, when he said women, he meant throughout his life, not at the very moment, ladies. So uh, calm down with that. So how do we grow and change the narrative? How do we? That's the central question that I want to finish up on. How do we grow and change the narrative for black women that they're not angry, that they're not, that they're not angry and ill-mannered and, and hostile and, and mad? T. T said, women aren't seeking a gangster dude. They are seeking a man that appears to be able to protect his home and not to expect his woman to fight for them. So I, I agree with that more so than what Sean said. Because I, I, I looked at what Sean said more in the elementary. I call it elementary. I'm talking about the younger years, in their 20s. And stuff. Don't provoke someone, then call them angry. Okay, well. And we're speaking from a technical sense. If I provoke you or not, you and you get angry, that's a true statement. You, you're angry. Never, because they talk too much without having any understanding. T, very factual. Don't poke the bear and act like a victim. You can't outrun a bear. That's for damn sure. And never, that was really, that was a really angry comment, man. <laughs> She probably said it, screamed it as she, as she was typing. You can show them you're able to provide and protect what they want to hype. What is the hype, sir? So you can show them that you can provide for them, take care of them, protect them, that you're going to do whatever you need to do, but they also want something else to accompany that, the hype. What is that? These old ones the same. You need to change your circle, sir. You're saying the old, the old women, the older women, still want the gangster dude and the thug and that that glamour type person. Uh, maybe change your, maybe, maybe change your your circle because a a woman of substance, talking about either already well educated or trying to better herself and not necessarily just academically, but growing as a person, trying to do something and they want better, they're not gonna want that. I don't think in my opinion. Said, I'm not, not at all angry, I'm laughing at many of these comments. The street dude, they want a street dude. Change your circle, change your circle because we are who we're around. That's, you may have heard that model, we are who we're around. If you're around 
people who want that, get out there and then try a different circle. When a person goes, says, if your wife was introduced to one of these gangster rappers, she's leaving you. You like the confidence there, sir. I, I think I think you're 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 like you're lacking the confidence because I think I think now I have met women where and I understand it. Hey, if uh, Brad Pitt or Denzel and blah blah blah, I said okay. Now I'm thinking in my head, if that girl walking across the street comes at me, I'm gone. So I get it. you leaving because of Denzel. It won't take all that for me, but. On a more serious note, if your wife was introduced to one of these gangster rappers, she's leaving you. She wasn't meant, she wasn't yours to begin with. Then, if another man can take her just because of their glamour, you say rap gangster rappers. If it's that easy, she wasn't yours. You were just barring her, prepping her. You were getting her ready for someone else. When a person goes without what they need for a long time, they seek an exaggerated version of. It no good, strong, productive men. Get a bad boy that appears to be doing it. It's a false security. I agree, false security. But people do it. Hershey, Hershey kids. Why? Why do it have to? Why does it have to be something wrong with the black woman to begin with? I don't like that. I don't think there's anything wrong with the black woman. I think there's people. There's things wrong with people. Some of them just happen to be black. And we're talking about the stereotype that's been passed down generation to generation for a variety of reasons. Why does there have to be something wrong with them to begin with? I don't know. And that's that's what we're discussing. Why? A balanced woman isn't leaving a balanced man. <laughs> that is that is true. I agree with Sean and Dr. O. She was just using you as a bookmarker if she if she gone like that. I agree. So <laughs> If the first dude that comes against the rapper, I think Sean said, comes comes across and she's gone like that, she wasn't yours. She she was you were you were preparing her. Well, she she should thank you for that. Black women are never mine. Okay, sir, you haven't been shy this whole time. You don't have to be shy uh, now. It was your, we're going back and forth. Everyone, no matter who they are, needs to work at being the best version of themselves. And when you're comfortable in your skin, you will find the love you want. All right. So we're kind of getting away from the topic. Yes. If you're comfortable in your own skin, you will find the love you want, regardless if you're comfortable in your skin, skin or not. The bigger point is the love that you need, because sometimes we don't know what, what it is we want or what you what you need. But she was for the streets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was a she was a, a player for the for the streets. Uh, the streets have her. So, <laughs> yeah, the, the streets have her. All right. So let's 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 get back and kind of round this up. The black woman. It, she's gotten such a bad reputation. Just over time, it's been it's been pushed down the road, kicked down the road. Far too long. And it doesn't seem like it's going to let up anytime soon. My question is why, what, ha or has the black woman done anything to confirm this stereotype that there's something wrong with the black woman? Have they confirmed this stereotype through their actions? Stereotypes can be broken if the work is put in. Can you blame her? Yes, they have. Okay, and they, I think you're answering my question. Of, have they done anything to push that stereotype along? What have they done? They've been holding it down, to be honest. Okay. Hershey Kiss says, no, black woman hasn't, has not done anything. We ask, what's wrong with black women? The same thing that's wrong with everyone. Develop yourself and stop blaming everyone else. That's easy, easy to say. 
Who has a question? I'm going to turn it over to some people in here. Who has a question that about the topic, black women, what's wrong with them, that they want to want people to ponder? Actions of a few, not all, but the bad rap is given to all. And that's that's sad and, and unfortunate, but that's that's what a lot of a lot of things right where a few people or some kind of, for whatever reason, seem to represent the many, or at least they look at the sum and run and apply that, generalize it across the entire race. We see that in the military, you military people out there are vets where we, a couple of people do something wrong and everybody's getting it. Everybody's getting it. Everybody's getting it. I'm going to tell a story about when I was in the military in basic training. I laugh at anything. I mean, if a person fell down the steps, I'd probably laugh depending on how, how they were flail, flailing and, and screaming and everything. I'd be laughing as I'm trying to help them up. But that was in basic training. I think it was the first or second day there. And the commander, colonel, and I think the first sergeant, Anyway, high enlisted, higher officer. They coming through inspecting our lockers. See what we brought. I was the third bed. Got through to me. I didn't bring anything crazy or anything like that. They got to my friend, black guy. Never forget it. And the commander going through his locker and he held up this. He was like, what, what, what is this? And my friend, he looked at him in a bewildered manner, and he just looked at him. He was like, uh, those are, uh, they're, they're condoms, sir. So he looked at him like, what the hell? You don't know what those are? And he said, yes, I know what they are. And of course he's screaming. So by this time, I'm really laughing on the inside. And he said, well, why did you bring them? And, and he said to, again, he looked at him crazy. My friend did like, you should know what they're for. But he was like, to, to you, sir. So at this point, my tongue is bleeding. I can taste the blood because I'm biting it because it was extremely funny. And he said, you're going to use this on one of my airmen and blah, blah, blah. He went in and then it clicked for my friend. Like, oh, man, I should hold him that. You're going to use this on one of my airmen. He was like, oh, no, no, sir. And so he that lasted for about 45 seconds. I don't know because I'm trying not to laugh because if I would laugh, I would have got it. The point of the story is we all got in trouble for the next like four hours because of that one fool. And him bringing condoms and him talking stupid like it's their condoms. You know what they're for. They're not playing on using. And I just thought I would tell that story. All right, let's get back to these comments. Enigma, you just as crazy as I am, but I want you to be sweet. So women can't do nothing. When, you, when we look at a projected image of black people in media, we believe like everyone else. Unlike other groups, we know they're black people and we can treat each other like the message given to us. Of course, y'all can. Did I miss a question? I'm going to get ready to finish this. I want to want someone, I want to ask somebody from the group to ask a question about this particular topic. What's wrong with the black woman? And Nigga TV, he has a question. Go for it. Why not allow black women to be accepted? Not wrong. I'm not, I'm not sure what that means. I'm not sure what that means. Or label as having something wrong. I agree. Why does it have to be a label? Well, there's nothing wrong with labels negative connotation labels. All right, here's a question. I think this is a question. 
why, what do black men want from us? What are you really complaining about? Really? <laughs> All right. That's the first question. I, I like that. What do black men, what do black men want from us? And we'll get to your question next. Nigma. But why do black, what do black, what do black men want from us? What are you all complaining about? Really? Good question. Men, can you answer that? And then we'll get to get to as two other questions. What do black men want from us? What are you all complaining about? Really? <sighs> that's hard to that's hard to answer only because for me, because I don't care who it comes from. I don't care the race, nationality, the creed. I don't care about any of that. All right, let me take relationships out of it for a second. From a, a social standpoint, my experiences have been where black women, they have a need to always want to get the last word, make the last statement. And I'm not sure what's driving it. Is it they feel disrespected? Do they feel as if years and decades and things that were passed down generation to generation? Why it appears that they more than others, again, I said it appears, they more than others like to have the last word. They just feel a need to have the last word to get their point across. And I've had women over the years say, well, I just want to make sure I was heard. I'm like, damn, I heard everything you said. I'm sitting literally three feet from you. You know I heard you. I, oh, well, I just want my point to be made. You made it 16 times. I get it. I got it. I heard you first, second, third, fourth, fifth. I went to sleep, woke back up, heard you again. So I need the need black women to stop again just the ones that maybe I've dealt with in my my past to stop trying to get the last word because when that's happening when, when, when that's when that's happening then I start to think of some of these stereotypes and like okay yeah I could see it but what, what do y'all think we have a few a few questions what do y'all think? What, what do black men want from us, really? Enigma TV wrote, why do black women call themselves black? Good question. I can't figure that out. Then there's a whole list of other things that we accept without taking a proper look at. Topic is black women, stereotype again. <laughs> All right. Black women are the backbone of black community, good, bad, or indifferent. We've been had to do, we've we've had to do a lot alone because the men were absent. So now everything's our fault. We have spent all of our energy. Are you talking about T? Are you talking about from a a present situation, or are you talking about just throughout the decades where black men are, have been absent? Or are you talking about more, more recent? Because I'm wondering why have they been absent? And have they been absent because of some of the things we've talked about in here, which is they've been you you've been seen as angry or ill-mannered or or mad and all those things. All right, so the backbone holding black men up to preserve them. Now it's time for black men to restore us. Nigma wrote, I want and have accountability, honestly. Feminine, wise, POV to counter my logical masculine, masculine stupidity. Oh, I wouldn't call yourself stupid, sir, but I'm not going to disagree with you. I think a lot of men want understanding, a floor, so to speak, because without it, we may be arguing because we don't understand what the other one means. It's like speaking Latin in Russian at times. I, I think we need to get to the point of, if, I don't know how many, I know some of you out there has tra traveled before, traveled to a different country. Let's say not just Mexico or Canada, but traveled abroad. Have you, and when you got off the plane, have you, and you were in a different country, 
could you couldn't understand anybody, right? Let's say and then you leave the airport, you're going out, going out. I remember the first time that I was in was it Thailand? No. First time I was in South Korea. And I got off the plane, I checked in and everything, and I go downtown and I couldn't, I was looking for something. Of course, it didn't speak the language. And I'm looking around and I don't all I see is South Koreans. And when I saw an American, I started smiling, walked up to him, hey brother, what's going on? And everything. It was like a big sigh of relief because now I seen something familiar and everything. And I think we need to get to that point of where we we see something familiar with the black woman and we can have these conversations where we 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 can push aside and block out all the things that are unfamiliar and focus on what's familiar. We've been treated like the men for the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s and now when when the focus be on healing us. I'm not sure what that means. Keep reading. Correction. When will the focus be on healing us? What needs to be healed? T, when will the focus be on healing us? And then who has to heal you? Conversations like this are proof that healing you all is priority. <laughs> no, sir, I could not be president at all. Because, you know, as you're going through those primaries and they start to find things out about you, nobody I know or you know. All right. Now we're going to go about another 10 minutes or so. I didn't expect this to go that long. Great question. Do black men see the struggles of the black woman? Great question. Okay. Let, let's all want to pin that. Let's all talk about that. Do black men see the struggles of black women? I do because it's all around me. They, they, they tell us, even if we don't care to hear at that very moment, I'm not saying ever care to hear, but at that moment, they remind us of their struggles. They, they remind us through, for me, they remind, remind me through our constant fussing or constant conversation. It doesn't have to be a negative conversation or an, or a bad argument, but I'm reminded a lot. All right, so it says, first listen, next stop calling us angry, stop leaving us to do everything ourselves and stop taking politeness as in envision, I guess imitation for free sex. That's not gonna change. You've heard everybody from comedians to preachers to public speakers to the local person at the barbershop or gas station where for whatever reason, a woman is nice. It's an imitation for, for sex. I mean, a woman says hi to me the wrong way. And I'm thinking, is she, does she want it? So I've had those thoughts. <laughs> and unfortunately, <sighs> politeness can come off. Black women don't even like themselves most of the time. That's scary. I think that goes more to the confidence, lack of confidence, self-worth, self-esteem, and all those things on a more serious psychological side of things. They don't wear their own hair or face a lot of the time. Damn, Don, you are really digging in. They don't wear their own hair or face a lot of the time. Are you saying they're too worried, too busy trying to be like somebody else than themselves? What if... Black woman can't, black woke can, I guess it'd be black woman can't spell. They don't wear their own hair and face a lot of the time. I guess you're talking about makeup. Why does that matter, sir? Many times men don't understand or listen. They think they do, but you can, but can you really understand the struggle? We can only understand the struggle, I think, to the degree that we see it or we hear it. Now, for me, I get, I've, over the years, have heard a lot, you don't understand. So I look behind me and say, hey, it's a PhD in psychology. I look across and say, I have five other degrees. I look over here and say, I'm about to start my seventh. I can understand a lot. So trust me, if you tell me, 
I heard you and I understand. The problem is my response makes you think I don't understand. No, my response is just the way I like to respond to things, but that doesn't mean lack of understanding. And I think some of the men out here would probably, <laughs> probably say the same thing. All right, there's some back and forth talking about spelling. Y'all, y'all squash that. They have no self-worth or confidence. They would sell their left foot to be white. Uh, how many black people you do you know, Don, that would black women would sell their left foot to be white? I love me no matter how I accessorize myself. <laughs> oh, accessorize, is that what you're calling it? <laughs> Don, number one wants to be white. All right, if we agree, I should block Don Mega. Y'all just, I need four or five people to agree and that person will be gone. But the stupid trolls are out tonight. Maybe you're a privileged white boy, that's nice. Who wants to be white, Don? Yeah, so, all right, one more, let's, one more question as we finish, finish up. Nicole G, what's that face for? Let's, who cares about the whole white? white person conversation, that's not the topic, but we need uh, one more good question about black women. <laughs> Why don't y'all squash the whole spelling thing? Oh, don't block me yet, he needs exposure to people with different ideas, sure. They have no, yeah. Yeah. Let's see what else I have on my agenda. Oh. <laughs> no, not yet. And woman is not spelled right. Don Megan and stupid trolls are out tonight. Why does it, it got to be stupid? Maybe a troll. I don't know about stupid. Again, let's build each other, right? We do need to build each other up, especially if we're talking about black women and being, building them up and, and making them feel valued and doing everything the opposite of what's been done to them to, to get them get them to this point. Remember, I, at the beginning, I was talking about slavery and dealing with that around 1619, 1620 to 1865, and then you had the Jim Crow period and everything, 100 years of that and lynching and, and unequal civil rights and negative media portrayal of Black women. And then you had the, finally, the post-civil civil rights era that we're, we're in now, but yet we're still seeing it. It's still taking place and everything, but all of that my opinion has constructed the current black woman. So it's been passed on through genetics, uh, biology, and then from a occupational or conditional learning type of situation. And that's created the black woman today who on one hand is seen as strong, powerful, backbone, mother, sister, in some cases, provider to on the other side, inferior, not stupid, angry, mad, and we need to be able to break that that cycle. I would never date a black woman. You guys don't even know your place or respect your men. I know black women who won't date outside their race. Yet complain that it's their race that causes them problems. All right, we will go a few more minutes. Anybody want to say anything? Add anything? I would never date a black woman who wants to be white, Don. Men and women have faced harsh, hardship or oh, hardship. 
Yeah, well, we, we all have, right? Black is strength and beauty. Let's not tear each other down. That's a house divided. This will be the fall if we don't fix it. Some cases I would say that we've already failed. We fall further? Yes. Or are you talking about this will be the fall, you mean a permanent fall, where regardless, we've already failed some, but there wouldn't be any turning around from this fall. What code can we agree? Okay. Yes, I, I would love to know why they don't respect their men. Am I native? <laughs> In my native country, women respect themselves and their men. Black woken or black women act like men. I seen a black woman at the gym the other day and she had up there 235 and I mean, she, she was killing it. This is bench press, not the squat. She was doing something crazy with the squats. I had to, I, so I left because if she was doing that, no point me being in here. But good question. And, and this will be the last question, I think, unless you all want to keep going and then it's up to you all. But Don Mega X, I would love to know why they don't respect their men. In my native country, women respect themselves and their men. Black women act like men. What code can we agree to, at least on this form, to garner respect between us? I think that's a sub very subjective question because, again, for me, it's about that last word. Why do you have to say the last, the last thing and get, get the if? Because I'm all about order. Don't know if you're religious or not, but God, man, woman, children. I'm all about order. And I, I get the, the point of you have to be worthy of it. Nonetheless, man, woman, children. So for me, it's all about the last word. Just shut up from time to time, just like I do. I'll bite my tongue. I won't say anything. But just 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 stop talking. I didn't mean to use the word shut up. Just just stop talking, and you don't have to get the you don't have to get the last word. You you don't. So that's that's a code for for me. And like Enigma TV said, for my women, <laughs> that's a code for me. Just I'm I'm big on that. I'm big on just getting getting it. Like you have to like, all right, then fine. All right, fine. All right, it's done. Well, yeah, it's done. So I just said it. Why do you have to re repeat that? Tom Megan can't spell either, and it was uh, Mike. You were jealous. What was I jealous of? I'm not sure who who was who. Well, my name is Mike, so I'm guessing you're talking to me. But Mike, you were jealous. Oh yes, of the weight of the, of the of the lady. Yeah. Well, one, she was doing things that I didn't think the body could do. <laughs> so that that was that was one thing, and she was posing like she was a a professional bodybuilder. That's how she was posing or she was working toward getting it. But she was doing all these things and moves and I didn't want her, I was staring, but I didn't want her to think that I was staring at her because attracted to her and shy or reserved or what have you. I was, I was staring because I'm picturing myself doing that. And then how many people would have to come over to help me get up and, and straighten back up and, and, and stuff like that. But I hadn't been there for, I don't know, probably 40 minutes and then she came and everything and she started doing stuff. And 10 minutes later, she, it was 2.25 and I, all right, it's time for me to go. But that was just her start because I was walking, she was putting, she did a couple sets and put, I think, a 10 pound on each one and everything. So you're not going to embarrass me. You're not going to, no, no, that's, no, that, that's what you're not going to do, black woman. Uh, no. Yeah, the lady at the gym. That's not a lady, that's a man. <laughs> my, point of, my point exactly. No, no, she was uh, she was a woman. She she was a woman. 
she had beat down any man that I know, but she was a murderer. I don't know who has ego. No, I don't know. I hope you're not describing my, my story as one of ego. Mm -mm, I just knew my place and it wasn't anywhere near where she was going to be working out at. Nope. <laughs> no, most women don't want a body build and bring up a good point. There are some, and not just black women, but since this topic is of that, that don't want to work out. But then there are some who do. So on one hand, you say, what can we agree at? Take care of yourself, your body. Your body is your temple. Do more to it that's good than bad. Do more to it that's better for you than harmful for you. Work out. Educate yourself. Go to the gym. Run. Educate yourself. Get some cardio in. Educate yourself. Those are some truths for some black men. Why would her strength embarrass a man? It wasn't, it didn't embarrass me. It just told me my place wasn't here. That, that's it. Did you ever think to walk over to her and commend her for what she was able to do? Oh, he absolutely not. Because uh, what if, because she could have made you know, any quick move and I would have, it would have froze me. I would have thought she was coming at me and everybody's laughing at me. So, or what if she, what if, I don't know her plight. I don't know her story. I could have came over there being innocent and hey, you, you, you're, doing a, you're doing a great job and everything. And immediately upon talking, she could have got black and angry on me. And, because she's tired of people coming up to her, even though I was coming to commit or flirting with her, even though I would have been coming up to, to comment, a positive comment. Nonetheless, I didn't, oh, did I ever think to walk up? No, I didn't, I didn't even think that. The only thought I had was, Mike, it's time to go. That was my only thought. Yeah, I did. he just said he didn't want her to think he was staring because he was attracted to her. Right. No man would walk to that. <laughs> why, are you, why are you assuming the worst? I'm not assuming the worst. I'm assuming all things. Right. And when I assume all things, I start to strategically take calculations. The what if. What if she wanted to shake my hand and, and wanted to become my workout partner? Positive thing. What if she wanted me to be her spotter? I can't spot her. So <laughs> negative thing. What if she would have seen me walking and would have been thinking, hey, another guy coming to flirt with me and she croaked out. I can't say anything to her. So how do we get on that? I don't know how we, how we got on that. I don't know how we got on that. Any other questions you all want to discuss? Negra TV, you're always left. Great question. You don't think by saying she could have responded like an angry black woman is given into the stereotype? Absolutely. And I did that on purpose. And it just goes to show you that that stereotype is present in many people. Some do it for fun, like I just did, but I think a lot of people who do it for fun, they may say it jokingly, but they I really believe that they, they mean it. The the next live, I'm going to try to do these weekly. The next topic is, who's the bigger liar, men or women? So y'all stand by for that. That's going to be the next topic. Who's the bigger, bigger liar, men or women? I have two topics that I'm throwing around, so it may be that. I may push that because I have something else I really want to talk about, but uh, I want to talk about them both equally, but that's the next topic. When is the next live? I'm going to try to do this, this weekly. It may be during the week, but I, I, I got to see. I, I, gotta, I just got to see. <laughs> it is. <laughs> What's the other topic? Yes. It's who's the bigger liar, men or women? 
you know, what's the what's the 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 third topic that I was kicking around. I I don't have a topic for it yet, so I don't want to say it's still kind of in conceptual phases. I may take in more psychological, which I try to put those in my non-interactive videos. So I'm trying to find a way to integrate it with this live session. So I'm, I'm going to wait, wait on that. All right, final question, I think. Can we talk about why black people won't go to therapy? If you're talking about black women, because we can keep it to that, or say black people, we can think that'll take us way off course. Education or not, assumptions and stereotypes are real. You're right, regardless of how educated you are, how educated you are. Assumptions, we all assume to a, to a degree, we all assume, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Assuming, it, again, if I have an iron plugged in and there's steam coming from it, I am going to assume that it's hot. I use that in my decision-making process. So assumptions can be good, but if you're assuming based on, I can't even say that. Assumptions can be good at times, although they can be bad. For instance, if you assume somebody's about to say something or you assume what they meant, big pet peeve of mine is the person saying, I, you know what I meant. I don't know why I got on the topic. Oh yes, oh yeah, that's a that's a good. Let me I'm gonna write that down. You mean why black people? Yeah, that's good. Think to to begin that. Think people. No, I won't. I won't go there. That's a good question because it's taught to us to suck everything up and be tough, extremely toxic, which we should. All right, so let's squash that piece for the next one. Anything else y'all want to bring up or talk about in, with respect to black women? Assume someone is mad by the way they look. Yes, that is an assumption by the way they look. And that's happened to me. I know this is about black women, but to a degree, I understand it because my demeanor is one really about just a regular serious face, poker face is what I would call. And I was a junior person in the military and I've had my supervisor come up to me and say, you know, people don't want to come up to you because they always think there's something wrong with you because you have this serious look on your face. Well, I said, well, how, how should my look go? Because yes, it, it, it's beautiful, but I didn't give myself this, this face. Now, this is no accident. This was divine given. I was even talking like this way back then. How should I look? What What is a look? And he couldn't explain to me, if you can just speak up more, or what does me speaking up have to do with my face? Because that was what you started with, that people don't want to come up to me because they say I always look so mad or look so serious. That, that has nothing to do with speaking. I can speak by my face. This pretty face is going to stay what it is. And I don't remember the way it ended or all the details. I mean, but I didn't change. I'm not going to change just because somebody else is uncomfortable with seeing somebody, seeing something so pretty and, and, and being intimidated by it. I think that's truly what it was. Not the serious look but like, damn, how does he, how does he do it? Sub subjective analysis, not factual at all. Yes, but the word itself factual, if it's subjective, then it is factual for them. So subject subjective analysis, not factual at all, it is. It is factual for them. It's the truth and their truth. The same thing, men tell us smile. Yeah, because when you smile, black women, it, it pushes aside anger and, and madness and ill-mannered and any number of words that have been used to describe women. All right, so anything else y'all want to discuss? No? I get that often. Which part? Smile more? 
we are talking about the stereotype, okay. Is any of the stereotype real? Or it, I'm sorry, is any of the stereotype accurate? Is it is it true? What day did you say the next live was? I didn't say a day. I'm trying. It may be Saturdays. I, it's hard during the week, I think, for some people to to participate. But we'll talk about that on online. I guess look at some analytics and see when when's a good day. It may be a weekly thing around around this time, this this same day. But if you hit this subscribe button and notification, you should get a notification on when when it's about to pop off. Why black people? We are talking about the stereotype to the person that believes it based on your comment. I'm not sure what comment that that goes with. Any final words y'all wanna discuss about black women and their anger, angry, mad, ill-mannered stereotype that's projected on them? Enigma, any final words from you? I don't know if you you got you got your woman around or women or women, or if you're just by yourself, any any final comments from you since you seem to be staring up the pot some? Anybody else ever have that issue is that they, or feel that they don't wanna say anything to you and say, cause you look so serious, but it's really, they just reject your beauty and they reject how pretty you, you are and everything. So they try to disguise it as you look serious. Yeah, could you say it's regional too? We all we all here, black women are nicer in the South. Why is that? I don't know who the hell, uh, who told you that? Uh, um, well, I'm sorry, I'm taking that back. I have heard, I've heard it to a degree of when I'm compare, comparing it from the South to up North, let's say in the DMV area uh, or further North where from a educational or progressive standpoint is faster, faster paced up North than it is in the South. You got people up in the North, for instance, the DC, Maryland, Virginia area who are pushing, 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 they're striving. That's why the higher paid jobs up North. So they're all, they're all pushing towards something academically especially or they're in these high paying jobs and the woman in the south they're more laid back i've heard this the more laid back they don't they're not in a hurry as they seem to be up north so that comes across as nicer so i've heard it in that context other than that i hadn't heard that black women in the south are nicer but maybe maybe it's because they don't have the academics the they don't make the money. They don't have the, the academic background. So they have to be nicer <laughs> to get the man. Whereas people like the women up north, they don't have to put up with it because they can make their own. I don't know. I'm just now I'm playing devil's advocate. All right. So we're going to go ahead and, and end this because we can go all day and everything. I, I I, so bringing it to a conclusion, I do thank everybody for, for participating and listening and giving your giving your opinion. All of them are opinions, of course. You can't say they're facts. Maybe they're facts for you, but they are opinions. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do that. Hit that notification bell and, and be sure to check out my other videos. I'll try to put out the non-interactive. It's more of a lecture. I'll try to do that weekly as, as well, in addition to having something like this as a live. It's more controversial topics, maybe, in this type of open forum, but I think some are going to be more, more subtles. Again, my next topic is probably going to be who's the bigger liar, men or women? Maybe. 
and that's kind of kind of controversial. But any final words? Again, I do thank you all for participating. This was my my first one, but I hope it's many many to come. Finally, you can't expect a woman to cook, clean, take care of kids, a husband, and deal with the community. Men kill me. Why can't we expect it? What's wrong with a person expecting something, even if it's a lot that you just subscribe or describe? What's what's wrong with having expectations like that? Why can't you? Absolutely, we we can expect it. If you're saying that's unrealistic, that's something else. But absolutely, we can expect a woman to cook, clean, take care of kids, husband, and deal with the community. Why can't we? You expect black men to provide, to nurture, I'm sorry, nurture you at least, provide, nurture, to comfort, to control, to be kings, to be leaders. Why can't we expect you to do X, Y, and Z? And I'm, I'm, I'm down the middle with this. I don't care if I cook clean and do all of those things as well. I can, I've been in situations where I, I worked and came home cooked clean and all of that. So I, me personally, I don't, I don't care as long as, cause I believe in, in teammates, as long as it gets done, it gets done. Men think women are supposed to stop the tempo of the day for a stranger. What, what, what does that even mean? Sometimes we aren't mean, we are busy. So now you're saying busy equals mean? Not sure what that is. Men think women are supposed to stop the tempo of their day for a stranger. That's not just rude, it's dangerous. Who's the stranger? Who's the stranger that you're talking about? Hmm. All right, so, <laughs> cause this will just keep going. It's already been almost an hour and 45 minutes of actual back and forth conversation. Great discussion, everybody. And I hope we, we learned something today about the, the, about the black woman and why she gets such a bad reputation, how we can do subtle things, some subtle, some not, not so subtle, do things that can help correct that stereotype, or at least if we can't correct the stereotype as a whole, in general, we can help correct that stereotype for the one that we're with, for the, for the one black woman that we know, our friends, our moms, our sisters. So at least we can control, control that. All right, so I'm gonna get ready to end this now. Thanks again for, for joining me and, and participating in everything. And you all take care. I hope to see you again soon. All right, this is Dr. O signing off.